Hey guys, so this week we're going to be taking a look at the Amazon Basics Slim Carry-On Travel Backpack. And in the past we looked at the Amazon Basics Travel Backpack and I was very impressed with how good of a travel bag that was for the price point that it came in at. So I was very excited to see that Amazon had created a new line of travel bags that seemed to be a little bit slimmer, a little bit more stylish and updated. And so I went ahead and ordered one and I've been testing it out. And like the original Amazon Basics travel backpack that we looked at, this bag does a great job of offering a nice look, some great features, and a nice amount of quality for its low price point. So really excited to share this with you guys. I think this is gonna be a great option for anybody looking for a stylish and reasonably priced travel bag. So let's just go ahead and dive in and take a closer look at the Amazon Basics Slim Carry-On Travel Backpack. So starting out with the overall look of the bag, I really like the aesthetic that Amazon has chosen to go with here. The bag definitely has a sleeker and more modern look than the original travel bag that we featured on the channel. Reminds me a lot of some of the e-bags, professional weekender bags, so very clean, almost professional looking style here. The bag is made out of a polyester material that feels fairly durable, especially for the price point that it comes in at. Obviously, it's not gonna be like the more rugged ballistic nylon that you see on something like the Air Travel Pack 2 but it still feels like it'll hold up pretty well with the amount of weight that I currently have in it. And although the material doesn't feel very water resistant, it does feel like it'd be okay in a light rain until you were able to get undercover. The bag doesn't include any sort of rain cover or anything like that. The zippers are also a little bit more exposed than what I would typically like to see, but it's nice that they are YKK all around. It's offered in a variety of colors. The one that we have here is the gray, which had a really nice modern look in my opinion, but they offer it in black and blue and just tons of other colors that you can look at on Amazon. I'll make sure to link to the exact page where you can get this bag. As far as the capacity of the bag, I'd place it at about 35 to 40 liters. Currently what I have in here is all the items that you've seen in all my other travel bag videos. So the types of things that I would take for a two to three week trip. And they were able to fit in here very comfortably. I even have a little bit of leftover space. So really nice size overall. It strikes a nice balance of providing enough capacity while still being carry on compliant. So this definitely feels like something that you would be able to carry on to any domestic airline and even be fine with on international airlines. There are actually two versions of the bag offered. What I have here is the weekender version of the bag, which is a little bit larger. They also have an overnight version, which is slimmer. It's not gonna be able to hold as much stuff, but it seems to have a very similar style. But I wanted to try out the weekender specifically as it seemed to be closer in size to the original Amazon Basics travel bag. Despite the amount of capacity that it offers, I love that it does manage to live up to its title in maintaining a pretty slim silhouette. So even when I'm wearing this with a lot of stuff on my back, it doesn't stick out awkwardly. I feel like I'd be comfortable walking around a crowded city or public transit with it. To help with some of that excess capacity, the bag has four compression straps, two on each side with clips that are very easy to remove. I love when bags have these actual clips that allow you to make the best use of these compression straps. So if the bag is a little bit emptier, you can tighten it down to make it a little slimmer or this can also help prevent stuff from moving around inside the bag or you can even clip on a jacket. So really nice addition of the compression straps. I feel like those add a lot of value, especially if you wanna carry some additional things like an umbrella or a tripod. Continuing along the outside, I was glad to see that the bag includes two nice handles, one at the top and one on the side. And I love how these were implemented. The handles themselves have a nice kind of soft meshing material here. They're not too thick and they're pretty low profile. They have a nice elastic material that allows them to come out so that you can get a good grip on them, but it pulls it back in close to the bag if you're not using them so they don't stick out awkwardly and you have that same elasticity on both handles. You can see that it goes in and out very easily. While we're on the outside, I was also happy to see that the bag includes a nice water bottle compartment. So as you can see here, I have the same water bottle that I've used in all my other travel bag videos, and it has a nice amount of elasticity can easily fit something a little bit thicker, another great spot to maybe put something like an umbrella as well. And so I love that you also have the ability to zip the water bottle compartment up if you're not using it to help the bag keep a slimmer, cleaner look and just to make sure that this doesn't snag on anything. And so moving on to the straps on the back pedaling, I really like how these straps were implemented. They're nice and thick. They have a nice amount of padding, a nice elevation on the padding. On the inside, they have a nice meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width so that you can carry a lot of stuff without having them feel like they're gonna dig into your shoulders. So overall, as far as comfort, the straps have been great to wear. They also have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. At the top near the shoulders, the stitching on the strap seems to be very well reinforced. So this was an area where I was a little worried about the straps with the original Amazon Basics travel backpack. And I was glad to see that they improved this area here. It definitely feels like this part of the strap will be more durable than in the past. It's also nice to see the padding extend all the way down across the shoulders to make sure that it's a nice, comfortable hold throughout. 
And so moving down to the bottom of the straps, you do have the ability to remove the straps and tuck them away to give the bag a cleaner look if you have to check it or if you want to carry it in briefcase mode or with the included waist strap. And in order to remove the straps, they have this plastic clip here, very easy to slide that out and then you could tuck the straps away in the zippered compartment at the top. The majority of this hook reminds me a lot of similar plastic hooks that we've seen on bags like the Heinz Eagle travel bag or even the original Amazon Basics travel backpack. And that has held up pretty well, but this in particular just feels pretty flimsy to me. So if, I imagine if you take this on multiple trips or you're constantly carrying it with a lot of weight or even if you regularly attach and detach the straps, this definitely doesn't feel like it's gonna be very durable. So I definitely wish that Amazon would have chosen to go with something sturdier here, maybe a thicker piece of plastic or even some metal just to provide a little bit of extra security as this is what actually keeps the straps in place. And over the longer term, I would be very concerned about this piece of plastic bending and breaking pretty easily. It is nice how easy it is to tuck the straps away and the bag works very well in briefcase mode or with the shoulder strap as we'll look at in a little bit. But before moving on, I did want to talk about the back paneling, which has been fantastic to wear. I love how soft and comfortable the padding on this area is. Same nice meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. The elevation also creates these nice air channels here to allow air to flow through while you're wearing this with a lot of weight throughout the day. So really great implementation on the back paneling. The bag overall has been very, very comfortable to wear. I have some concerns about the durability of the straps, specifically with the plastic connectors we just looked at, but the overall comfort of the bag has been really, really great. On the back paneling, the bag has a nice sleeve that you can use to pass through a suitcase handle. So if you are traveling with a larger carry-on bag, you'll be able to rest this on the suitcase handle so that you don't have to carry that weight around with you while you're moving around the airport. And then another nice feature here on the back paneling is this hidden pocket near the bottom. It's nice and big. This is gonna be a great spot to store any sensitive documents or items. So currently what I have here is just my field notes. But this pocket has a lot of space. You can definitely put passport in here, some travel documents, cash, maybe even a thin wallet or your phone. So a nice amount of space and versatility offered by this compartment here. This also gives you an idea of just how thick the padding is down here at the bottom. So if you're looking for something that's very comfortable in the lumbar area, this bag is gonna be a great option. And so as I mentioned earlier, when you touch the straps away you can carry this like a briefcase with the handles that we showed or the bag also has these two plastic connectors very similar to the ones used on the straps that you can pair with the included shoulder strap that the bag has and so this is a pretty nice standard shoulder strap here nice amount of padding it's pretty thick it has a gel like material here so it's pretty comfortable to wear it as a shoulder bag with bags of this size i typically just prefer to use the backpack straps but if you like using shoulder bags it's nice that the strap is included and that you have the different options on how to carry it the shoulder strap is very easy to attach and detach same plastic clips that we saw on the straps so similar durability concerns here to the clips that we saw on the straps but they are very easy to get on and off if you want to convert from shoulder bag to backpack and vice versa and so jumping into the different pockets and organizational options, I was really impressed with just the amount of pockets that the bag has to help keep everything separate and in its own particular place. On the front, the bag just has a very simple, quick access compartment here. I like the bright inner lining to make it very easy to see what's on the inside. This compartment offers a nice amount of space. It's a little bit slimmer than some of the other ones we'll look at, but still plenty of space to hold some of the flatter items that I typically carry with me in here. I currently just have my Kindle, but this would be a great spot to put something like a notebook or maybe my wallet and phone while going through TSA. It's just a very easy compartment to be able to get to your stuff quickly. The next compartment is what you might call the administrative area where you could put some of your tech accessories and smaller accessories. There's a lot of internal organization in this compartment. Before jumping into the compartment, I do wanna call out that this compartment has lockable zippers. And so opening that up, it has a nice wide opening and lots of organizational options on both sides of the compartment. I like that it opens up wide and flat so that if you're packing this out, it's very easy to see everything that's in the compartment. And so starting off with the front side here at the top, there's just a few slots for something like a pen or a stylus, which is what I currently have here. Next up, there's just a larger, simple zippered compartment. And so this area here, the compartments can get a little bit difficult to use since they're right on top of each other. They're all kind of share volume. They each allow you to store a fair amount of stuff, but it's definitely gonna be harder to store thicker items in here. So currently what I have in this back one that goes 
about to the bottom of the compartment to where my hand is here. I just have my full-size moleskin notebook and that fits in there easily horizontally. And then under that, there is another zippered simple compartment, no internal organization in this one either. And in this compartment, I just have my solar portable battery, which I like to hang on the outside of my bag while I'm walking around so that it charges up. So just another simple compartment, very similar to the one we were looking at here. It's a little strange that they have so many slim compartments kind of stacked on top of each other. I think it might've been just as useful to eliminate one of these and just leave a little bit more volume. Next up, you just have a simple elastic compartment here where I currently just have my sunglasses with their case and so this comes out a nice amount I like the elasticity provided here so that you can hold something a little bit bulkier next up is another simple zipper compartment this one has mesh so it's nice to be able to see easily what's on the inside and I also like that this has a little bit of extra volume you can see how much it comes out to allow you to store something a little bit thicker so currently what I have in here is my portable hard drive and then I also have my GoPro Hero 3 Plus so you can see just how much this compartment comes out. I can almost fit my whole hand in here, so a nice amount of space. And so even with all the little slots that are available, if you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you know that I typically prefer to travel with something like this GORUCK wire dot because of how flat it is and how easy it is to just kind of keep everything contained as opposed to using all the little pockets. So I was happy to see that I could still stick to my normal packing style and just keep everything in the wire dot if I preferred to travel that way. Moving on to the flap of the compartment, you see some additional organizational pockets here. So at the top, there's just a nice slim mesh compartment, very similar to the one we just looked at. It comes out a nice amount, so some good volume here. And currently what I have in here is just a small lightning cable to charge my phone. And then I have my Gerber shard. And then I just have a USB-C hub for my MacBook. And then on the other side of that compartment, there is a few slots for something like business cards maybe. I didn't like these slots because when you open the bag flat, whatever you have in here tended to fall out. And then the last compartment here is just another larger mesh zippered area that might be good for holding something like a laptop charger or larger tech accessories. This one doesn't have the same volume that the other zippered compartment have. So this one you can see it sticks out a little bit. This one doesn't have that same capacity, but it still offers a nice amount of space. So I currently have my Apple Magic Mouse in here. And then I also just have a spare USB-C to USB-C cable. The rest of the charger is in the wire dock, which is what I would typically use, but I would be able to fit in here if I wanted to. And the last thing that I almost forgot to mention here is that the compartment actually doesn't stop here at the zippered area. It goes down a little bit more, so you have some extra space. You can take advantage of the full volume here. And so at the bottom, there's some additional slip compartments here. If you have another charging block that you need to hold, or if you wanna put your laptop charger in here, this might be another good spot. So lots of different little slip pockets sprinkled all throughout this compartment to help keep everything organized in its place. The next compartment here is a top axis tablet compartment, and this one is also lockable. It doesn't have the same mechanism to lock as the previous compartment since it only has one zipper. In order to lock this, you can hook the zipper to this little included loop at the end here. And so this is an interesting system. I've seen this on a few different bags. It doesn't feel quite as secured as being able to attach it to another zipper, which is also made of metal. This is attached to what feels like a metal loop, but this fabric here seems like it could be susceptible to tearing or to a knife or something so would have been nice to just have the two zippers to attach them to each other but still nice to offer at least that little bit of deterrent and the ability to lock that you have a similar mechanism for the main area as well and so opening this compartment up you can see you can easily access the tablet sleeve there's plenty of space here for different size tablets currently what I have in here is my iPad mini 2 and that fits in there very easily and on the inside, there's a nice elevated compartment. There's a little bit of a soft kind of gel-like sleeve here, which feels really nice. It seems to offer good protection from scratching. So really nice to be able to easily reach down and grab your tablet while you're on the go. A nice amount of protection and space offered in this compartment. We'll definitely take a closer look at this again once we get into the main area. Next up, I wanna talk about the laptop compartment, which is also lockable. And opening this up, it has a three-quarter opening, so it doesn't open completely flat, but you have a nice amount of space to get into your device easily. You can definitely fit larger devices in here. Currently what I have is my 13-inch MacBook Pro but I believe you would easily be able to fit a 15 and maybe even a 17 inch laptop in there. And so the compartment offers a nice amount of padding here on the back. There's no sort of felt lining on the back, which would have been nice to help prevent against scratching. It has the same gel-like type sleeve that we saw in the tablet compartment, and so it has a nice amount of elasticity. It's not very thick. It would have been nice to see a little bit more padding on the sleeve, especially for the laptop compartment. But it is pretty soft, which would definitely help prevent against scratching. One thing that was weird about this area to me is that there is no bottom to this sleeve, so your device actually goes all the way through. It's held in place by the sleeve, but it's not elevated elevated off the bottom of the ground, which would have been nice if it was more similar to the tablet compartment, which was actually elevated. So 
A little bit of a strange design decision there and definitely think that could have been improved. And so moving on to the main compartment, this area is also lockable. I like that it has the two zipper locking mechanism as opposed to the one with the loop that we discussed earlier. So very easy to open this up. So as you can see, nice amount of space here. I have all the same items that I've used in all my other travel bag videos. So first up, I have my penguin chiller shoes and then I have my dop kit of choice, my air travel kit. Next up, I have my smaller packing cube with my underwear, my socks and t-shirts, things like that. Then I also have a pair of Toms that I always travel with. And lastly, I have my larger double-sided packing cube with my dress shirts and jeans and larger clothing items. And so as you can see here, very simple compartment, no internal organization, no straps on the inside. So just a big bucket of space so that you can organize everything in the way that you prefer. On the flap, you also have a fair amount of volume, no sort of mesh compartments like we've seen with a lot of other travel bags, but you do have the ability to open this area up. And so on the inside here, we get a clearer view of the tablet compartment. So this is where we looked at earlier that we were accessing from the top. You can actually see the tablet sleeve here. And as I mentioned, it is elevated off the bottom of the ground. This is how I wish the laptop compartment had been implemented. So nice amount of protection here. You can see you can fit a full size tablet in there for sure. In addition to being in the tablet compartment, you also have a lot of extra volume here. If you want to separate out some of your clothing items, you could put a jacket in here or maybe even another packing cube. So I like the ability to kind of spread everything out and the versatility offered by the volume that this compartment has. So just a really great job with this main compartment and with the overall organization on the bag. I feel like this is a worthy addition to the Amazon Basics collection and a nice alternative that's gonna be a little bit sleeker and slimmer and have some extra organizational options compared to the other Amazon Basics travel bag that we looked at in the past. And so to wrap up, I've been really impressed with the Amazon Basics Slim Carry-On Travel Backpack as I've been using it. It offers a nice amount of organization, space, style, and it comes in at a great price. And so you can purchase this on Amazon for about $75. And the version that we looked at in the video, as I mentioned a few times, is the weekender version of the bag. There's also an overnight version, which is a little bit smaller and it's a few bucks cheaper. And to me, this is a great value for the type of bag that you're getting. It's not something that's gonna necessarily last a lifetime like a GORUCK bag or something like that. In the past, we featured a few different budget travel bags that might be worth comparing this to. The first one, of course, is the original Amazon Basics travel backpack that we looked at a while back. That has been a really popular bag that I've gotten a lot of great feedback on. Like this one, it comes in at under $100. It's a little bit bigger, and in my opinion, it doesn't have quite the same style as this. It gets a little bit bulkier, it can hold more stuff. It's very similar to the e-bags, mother loader bags. And for the value, that was a fantastic bag. Obviously, as I mentioned with this one, it's not something that's gonna last forever. The build quality is not the same as what you'll see on a lot of the over two or $300 bags. But for the value, that bag has performed very well, and I'll definitely make sure to include a link in the description below to the review that we did for that if you wanna check out the features and see how the two bags compare against each other. The next bag I recommend checking out would be something like the Inatech Business Travel Backpack, which we looked at recently. It's a little bit smaller and slimmer, but it still works well for traveling. And that one comes in at around $70, and it has a little bit of a sleeker look in my opinion. It's not gonna be able to hold quite as much, and it doesn't have all the same organizational options and pockets that this bag has. But if you're looking for something that might be a little bit more appropriate for business travel or might work slightly better for daily use, that'll be a great option to check out. And so the next bag this reminded me of was the Heinz Eagle 44 liter travel bag. That was another great travel backpack that comes in at under $100. It was very lightweight, even lighter than this one. It had a very nice nylon material, lots of pockets and great organization. It had a little bit more space than this, so if you're traveling for a longer period of time or you don't wanna pack quite as minimally, that might be a good option to check out. And then the last option I'll mention here, which is in a little bit higher price range, is the Tortuga Set Out Divide, which comes in at about $180. And that's just been one of my favorite kind of versatile travel bags. It's a similar size to this, but it also has the ability to expand and compress for use as a daily bag in addition to being a travel bag. And it also has a very comfortable harness system, a removable waist strap that's included with the bag, and just a really solid build quality. So if you're looking for something that's kind of in this style, but that's gonna last you a little bit longer, the set out divide is gonna be a great option to check out. But with all that being said, I think the Amazon Basics Slim Travel Backpack holds up great to all the other budget travel bags that we've looked at on the channel. And it's just really impressive the type of bag that you can get for under $100 these days. The bag has a really great style. It's been very comfortable to wear. I love the organizational options. And if you're not looking to spend that much on a travel bag and you don't need something that's gonna last for many years to come, this is gonna be a great option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear the experience that you guys have had with budget travel bags. And if you have any favorite budget options that you recommend checking out, please let me know in the comments. And if you guys found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like below. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to new Mercedes upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.